Good morning, O'Neill. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. I hope you enjoyed your three-day weekend, got to rest, relax, and be ready for learning today. Um, not too much is going on this week, which is nice because we can just jump into learning and having fun. But I do want us to remember about our hands to self. We've been having a little bit too many fights or physical aggression these last couple weeks. I want us to keep in mind that we keep our hands, feet, shoulders, knees to ourself. If somebody has hurt us, hurt our feelings, hurt our bodies, we have to tell them to stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Because if you fight back, if you push back, if you punch back, it makes the situation worse. So we have to make sure we're using our words, not our fists. Okay? I really need you to work on that this week for me. Okay? We want you to have fun. We want you to learn. And we want you to be safe. All right. So... Monday was Indigenous Peoples Day, and um, I just, I, I feel such a strong connection to um, Native Americans, and I am so interested in their history and their culture. Um, this summer, um, where I, I have a cabin in Wisconsin, near Hayward, Wisconsin, and this summer we went as a family to an Ojibwe powwow. It was so amazing. The sounds, the music, the dancing is, and the regalia is just an amazing experience. And so in our newsletter, I shared with you um, a video of the opening ceremonies for Honor the Earth powwow. And I made a slideshow of some of my pictures. Uh, from that event. And so I hope you take a look at that because it's it was very moving to me and I hope you find it as interesting and moving as well. So that being said, I have a really cool story to read to you called Jingle Dancer because that is what a lot of the female Native Americans wear as their regalia for their powwows. And so this book is by Cynthia Lechich Smith. And let's read about the Jingle Dancer. Okay, here we go. Tink, 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 sang cone-shaped jingles, sewn to Grandma Wolf's dress. Every grandma bounced step brought chattering tinks and light blurred silver against jingles of tin. Jenna daydreamed at the kitchen table, tasting honey on fry bread, her heart beating to the brum, brum, brum of the pow wow drum. As moon kissed the sun goodnight, Jenna shifted her head on Grandma Wolf's shoulder. I want to jingle dance too. Next powwow, you could dance, girls. Grandma Wolf answered, but we don't have enough time to mail order the tins for the rolling jingles. Again and again, Jenna watched a videotape of Grandma Wolf jingle dancing. When Grandma bounce-stepped on TV, Jenna bounce-stepped in the family room carpet. But Jenna's dress would not be able to sing. It needed four rows of jingles. As the sun fetched morning, Jenna danced east to Great Aunt Sis' porch. Jenna bounce-steps crunched autumn leaves but her steps didn't jingle. Once again, great aunt sis told Jenna a Muscogee Cree story about Bat. Although other animals had said he was too small to make a difference, 
Bat won a ball game by flying high and catching a ball in his teeth. Rising sunlight reached through a window pane and flashed against, what was it? Hanging in Aunt Sis's bedroom? Jingles on a dress, too long quiet. May I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna asked, not wanting to take so many that Aunt Sis's dress would lose its voice. You may, Aunt Sis answered, rubbing her calves. My legs don't work so good anymore. Will you dance for me? I will, said Jenna, with a kiss on Aunt Sis's cheek. Now Jenna's dress needed three more rows. As sun arrived at mid-circle, Jenna sipped south to Miss Scott's brand new duplex. At Jenna's side, jingles clinked. Miss Scott led Jenna into the kitchen. Once again, Jenna rolled dough and Miss Scott fried it. May I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna asked, not wanting to take so many that Miss Scott's dress would lose its voice. You may, Miss Scott answered, tossing flour with her apron. At powwow, I'll be busy selling fry bed and Indian tacos. Will you dance for me? I will, said Jenna with a high five. Now Jenna's dress needs two more rows. As Sun caught a glimpse of the moon, Jenna strolled west to Cousin Elizabeth's apartment. At Jenna's side, jingles clanked. Elizabeth had arrived home late from the law firm. Once again, Jenna helped Elizabeth carry in her files. May I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna asked, not wanting to take so many that Elizabeth's dress would lose its voice. You may, Elizabeth answered, burrowing through her messy closet for her jingle dress. This weekend, I'm working on a big case and can't go to powwow. Will you dance for me? I will, said Jenna, clasping her cousin's hands. Now Jenna's dress needed one more row of jingles, but she didn't know which way to turn. As moon glowed pale, Jenna stuffed, shuffled north to Grandma Wolf's. At Jenna's side, jingles sat silent, high above clouds wavered like worried ghosts. When Jenna tugged open the door, jingles sang, tink a tink a tink a tink. Grandma Wolf was jingle dancing on TV. Jenna breathed in every hi-ho-ho -ho of the powwow song. Her heart beat brum, 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 brum to the pounding of the drum. On family room carpet, beaded moccasins waited for Jenna's feet. She shuffled off a sneaker and slipped on a moccasin that long before had danced with Grandma Wolf. Jenna knew where to find her fourth row. May I borrow enough jingles to make a row? Jenna asked, not wanting to take so many that Grandma Wolf's dress would lose its voice. You may, Grandma said with a hug. Now Jenna's dress could sing. Oh, I so want you to watch the... Um, the opening ceremonies of Honor the Earth powwow, and you'll be able to hear all those drums and jingle dresses. Watch it. Every night that week, Jenna helped Grandma Wolf sew on jingles and bring together the dance regalia. Every night, Jenna practiced her bounce step. Brum, 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 sounded the drum at the powwow the next weekend. As light blurred silver, Jenna's jingle danced. For great aunt sis, whose legs ached. 
for Miss Scott, who was sold fry bread, and for Elizabeth, who worked on her big case. So all the four rows, one, two, three, and then four up here, her four rows. And for Grandma Wolf, who warmed like the sun. Ting, 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 ting. <laughs> so just a little background that I want to share with you from the author's note. In this story, Jenna is a member of the Muskegee Cree Nation. It is also of Ojibwe, of the Chippewa descent. She lives in a contemporary intertribal community in a fa and family in Oklahoma. Cree Nation is located in 10 counties in East Central Oklahoma, so reservations, and has more than 44,000 enrolled members. The story of Bat that Great Aunt Sis retells to Jenna is a Muskegee traditional story. Muskogee, sorry, Muskogee. Ball games have been played by native peoples for many years, many generations, and stories about such games between animals and the birds have been told by people of various regions of the Americas. The home of the Ojibwe people, that's the reservation that I've been to that the pictures and the video is from, is of the Great Lakes region of the United States and Canada. Ojibwe women and other native women of Canada are often credited as the first jingle dancers. Although today's graceful, dignified jingle dancers include girls and women of most native nations, a number of traditional stories explain the original and purpose of the jingle dance dress and most touch on themes of healing and prayer. Jingle dresses are usually made from fabric and solid in color. Hundreds of jingles are sewn directly onto the dress or more often onto ribbons, fabric, or tape attached to the dress. These jingles are traditionally made from the silver tin or aluminum lives of tobacco cans which were rolled into cones. However, sometimes other metals are used, including gold canning lids, like those ball jars. The jingles make a tink tink noise that is often compared to rain falling on a tin roof. In the past few years, more and more dresses have incorporated fringe and ribbon work, lace sequins and other details. The regalia may also include scarfs, cusp, a bag or pouch carried in the left hand, an eagle wing or tail feather carried in the right hand, a conch or beaded belt, and boots or moccasins with leggings. Most dancers wear their hair in one braid with a feather held by a barrette or an ornament. Some dancers wear two braids in the front with barrettes. A new dancer is a cause for joy, for her family to have a small giveaway to honor her. Fine gifts are given not only to persons being honored, but to others instead. The giveaway shows humility before the creator, generosity and pride in the honoree. The number four is emphasized in Jenna's story. Many native people believe that it is important, even sacred number symbolizing, for example, the four directions, the four seasons, the four stages of life, and the four colors of man. So, Jingle Dancer. And it makes me think of connections to other cultures. And every culture has its own special dancing um, and special music that it goes along with it and special clothing that is worn. But a lot of it is connected together to represent you know, um, celebration. So let's remember to celebrate our indigenous peoples and I want to celebrate you and we're going to have a terrific Tuesday. <laughs>